is a land that concealed its inhabitants. And all the people we saw there are huge, giants. But um, there were a couple of, uh, of them, including Joshua, who tried to encourage them. No, we have the word of the Lord. Let's go there. Let's uh, try to establish our, our towns in, in the promised land. But they will not listen to, to that. So something very interesting happened in the uh, history of Israel. Uh, very interesting. Um, um, it's related again to the 40 days. Um, that we have for Lent, the 40 days. So the whole community, and this is uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 14. And this the whole community broke out with loud cries. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole community saying to them, If only we have died in the land of Egypt, or if only we will die here in the wilderness. And the Lord said, I pardon them as you have asked. That wasn't interceding. Yet by my life and the Lord's glory that fills the whole earth, of all the people who have seen my glory and the signs I did in Egypt will die. He will say, while your children will wander for 40 years, suffering from your infidelity, till the last of you lies dead in the wilderness, corresponding to the number of days you have spent serving the land 40 days. You shall bear your punishment one year for each day, 40 years. Those you will realize what it means to oppose me. So the journey, the pilgrimage from Egypt to the promised land was supposed to last a few weeks. You said that the, the map is a very short distance, very short distance. But what happened when they were just ready to enter into the promised land? They were afraid. Although they sent some scouts to, you know, check out the land for 40 days, like 40 days. But we, they came back with conflicting reports. They were afraid, fearful. And they lied to the community about the giants and whatever. And they discouraged everybody. And all of the discouraged everybody, worse than that, they grumble, complain against God. That's the number one sin. I mean, that happened from day one in the desert, complaining, complaining, complaining. And they forgot how good God has been with them. They did not trust God who had provided food, protection, and safety. I mean, you name it. All the, all the miracles that he did during their escape from Egypt. So they didn't see a provident God. What they saw is someone who had brought them from Egypt to kill them. And that's what they said, you know. Why he had brought us here, we would have died as slaves in Egypt or in the wilderness, rather than fighting with these giants. So he represents again people that have a misconception of God. You know, misunderstanding of His providence, His care, His love for us. Completely different. Um, again, that's the number one sin. They distrust God. And because of that, God said, okay, you ask for it. I mean, literally, say you ask for it. You said you will die in the desert? So you will be down. Go back to point A from the beginning to he said go back to the Red Sea when you started the journey and wait for there 40 years until everybody died but the, the younger people that didn't complain. Too young to complain. 
So only the children were able to enter the promised land because they have complained, grumbled against God. So it tells us that part of our uh, Lenten journey is to approach our Lord with confidence, with trust, with love. Do not complain too much and heal that image that we have of our Lord. Heal that with a compassionate God who only wants the best for us. Um, that will happen, you know. God is providing for them. And God, in, in the Bible, He will say, you know, I provided food, manna. I, I, I destroyed all the Egyptians. I tried to kill you. Um, there was a, a cloud of protection. So everything that the Lord did, they didn't, they didn't see that. They didn't see the providence. They only were afraid of their enemies, afraid of the future. A part of may not. So that's the number one sin that they committed on. Again, plan A, three weeks, go into the promised land, and you will be successful. Nope. We don't believe you, Lord. Okay, go back, die, and come back. And that's what happened. Although, although there is another interesting story, very interesting story that, um, what happened is that, um, yeah, there was a revolt. There was a revolt. And there was an unsuccessful invasion. So even the Lord said, you go back. Some of them went to fight. They tried to fight. Um, they dared to go into the hill country. Um, and the Amalites and the Canaanites who dwell in that country came down and defeated them, beating them back as far as for man. So they even tried to, to fight their, their enemies, but they were not successful because they didn't have the aid of the Lord. And we know the rest of the story. Okay. Now we go back to uh, the book of Kings, um, chapter 18, verses 19. Uh, we have the prophet Elijah. The prophet Elijah, who was one of the most famous in the Bible. Um, we know what happened with. Uh, the prophet Elijah, he was a champion of Israel. Um, you know the story of uh, Jezebel, who was the wife of the king. Um, that was the first mistake of the king that he married a non-Israelite, and she brought her religion. And they got to spread her religion among the Israelites. So God has to put a stop to that. And that's why we have the champion of the faith, um, the second one that appeared in the transfiguration of the Lord in Nigeria. Uh, you know that there was an interesting fight on Mount Carmel. Remember that? Um, I didn't know the story until I check it out that there were two sets of, of pagan priests. Um, now, some of all these ran to me on Mount Carmel, as well as 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So they were the prophets of you know, 450 plus 400. And as you know, there was a test of faith asking uh, for fire from heaven. Um, what happened? Yeah, when they did the 450, whatever number it was, they prayed for that, nothing happened. And although Elijah asked them to throw water to the, to the wood, the lumber, 
um, he was able to bring fire down from, from heaven, and with the fire he consumed all the rest of the false prophets. We can say that it was the most, one of the most successful miracles in the Bible. Very successful. But what happened next? Sir? What happened next? Mm -hmm. huh? the, the queen was very upset oh, yeah. because she lost all her. What is that? The priest, yeah. yeah. And she wanted to kill Elijah. So he, he, she put a ransom on Elijah's head. And they began persecuting Elijah. And he has to flee. And the interesting part of the story is after his most successful murder, after, I mean, after seeing the finger of God in that murder, he has to flee, flee for his life. And he was very discouraged. We, we, we read, the, the, we read the, the, the story in the book of Kings. He was so discouraged that he asked the Lord to kill him. Yeah, that's how depressed he was. He said he was so depressed. He said, Lord, I did everything right. I was very successful in, you know, in, in terminating the false idolatry. I know I have to escape. Um, I know where to go. I know what to do. Um, but whenever we are in a time of affliction, a time of distress, God will always send us His help. And the help came in the front of an angel. Was a, it was a miracle again. In front of an angel. But this time the angel did something that was also a symbol for us Catholics. It was very discouraging. He just said, Lord, I'm stopping here. I want to die. Well, the angel sent him, and the angel came down and gave him food, uh, particularly bread, and that bread was uh, for us it's a symbol of, of course of that, of the, of the Holy, Holy, Holy Eucharist, I mean water, a jar of water, but also bread, and he, he ate his field and went back to sleep, and the angel waking up again, no, no, eat again, <laughs> so he ate a second time, and according to the Bible, he has so much energy, so much nourishment from that winter meal that he was able to walk 40 days again. So 40 days. So um, he was able to walk 40 days. Um, yeah. He looked, uh, after he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touching and said, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. He got up, ate and drank. The strength of that food, for that strength, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of the Lord. So that's a symbol of the Holy Eucharist. Um, and you know, after that 40 day journey, he could say, victory, victory. He was a new man. He was a new man. He was, that totally changed his life. But I want to say that it was not only his lengthened journey, but also after receiving that, um, that beautiful meal, the beautiful meal. And that's why he's considered the most, the most important prophet of the Old Testament. Can I ask? Can you help me with the reading? There's another story about Elijah. And that's taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 9. Well, the persecution didn't stop with that. So he was persecuted a second time. What happened? 
So the first, remember the first sign, he's fleeing. He went to the mount of the Lord, had the special land over there, was nourished, stranded by the Lord. What happened the second time? Then the king sent a captain with his company of 50 men after Elijah. The prophet was seated on a hilltop when he found him. Man of God, he ordered, the king commands you to come down. If I am a man of God, Elijah answered the captain, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50 men. Ahaziah sent another captain with his company of 50 men after Elijah. Man of God, he called out to Elijah. The king commands you to come down immediately. If I am a man of God, Elijah answered him, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And divine fire came down from heaven, consuming him and his 50 men. Again for the third time, Ahaziah sent a captain with his company of 50 men. When the third captain arrived, he fell to his knees before Elijah pleading with him. Man of God, he implored him, let my life and the lives of these 50 men, your servants, count for something in your sight. Already fire has come down from heaven, consuming two captains with their companies of 50 men. But now, let my life mean something to you. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. You need not be afraid of him. So Elijah left and went down with him and stated to the king, Thus says the Lord, Because you sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, you shall not leave the bed upon which you lie. Instead, you shall die. Ahaziah died in fulfillment of the prophecy of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Since he had no son, his brother Joram succeeded him as king in the second year of Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. So what happened the second time? You have victorious. You have prayed no more. And this time are the enemies who kneel, who kneel before him, the victorious. So after his land, um, after his encounter with the Lord, he's able to overcome any obstacles, any trials. And we know he has the power of the Lord with him. He's afraid no more. So it's a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful reflection, beautiful, beautiful story that we have in the Bible. The most uh, Every 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 uh, Ash Wednesday, we we read uh, in the Gospel uh, of Matthew when Jesus is inviting us to to begin our Lent by good deeds, words of uh, prayer, fasting, and not skin. And every uh, every first Sunday of Lent, we have the Gospel of the Temptation of Christ in the Desert. That that's Jesus forty days in the desert. Um, I don't wanna because of time. I don't wanna make it too long over there. But I wanna talk about Jesus' second Lent. What is Jesus' second Lent? What is that? Let's take it for the books of the Acts of the Apostles, one to five, chapter one. Uh, we start with uh, verse 3, ch chapter 1, verse 3. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days. And he's speaking about the kingdom of God. While well, meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. So we call that the honeymoon of the Lord. <laughs> He's already victorious. They have to, to fear no one. So it was the last, the last catechism that Christ gave to his disciples. 
when he was appearing during 40 days, it was the, you know, the last lesson that he gave to his disciples, 40 days. So then we, we don't know what happened. But in the 40 days, we're from what happened 50 days later. But 40 days, uh, Jesus was instructed then, and he asked him three things. What did he ask them to do? Number one, um, he, he asked them um, to speak about the kingdom of God. Speak about the kingdom of God. Um, number two, he asked them to be witnesses of him in Jerusalem. And number three, he asked them to pray for the Holy Spirit. I think that's still the mission of the church that we continue with the disciples. Speak about the kingdom of God, um, be witnesses of Him, and you still pray for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. And this is the church of our Lord that we continue with that mission on earth. So during, uh, during this reflection, we have uh, learned about God's plan of salvation. Plan A, the flood. Plan A, flood the earth and down all sinners. Build a, a, an ark and only the selected people will be saved. Plan A, and that plan, that plan failed. Plan B, Let's start out with giving the rules and regulations. Give them a precise law and ask them to fulfill, to follow the law. Nope. Plan B didn't work. Plan C. Send the prophets. <laughs> Jonah, Elijah, send the prophets. If they repent, um, they will be saved. Did it work? <laughs> uh, we have we have all God's intentions, you know, to serve His people, do everything possible for the salvation of people. But when Plan A, B, C, D didn't work out, what's the last plan? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Save them by myself. And that's the plan that God set along. We did not earn it. We don't. We do not deserve it. It is not about us. It is about God's plan to save us. No matter how we reject that plan of salvation. So in the moment of reflection, we thank the Lord for everything He has done for us and for our salvation. And we read in the history of salvation that the Lord is always taking the initiative, always showing his desire for our salvation. And let us all reflect in the times that people, their freedom have rejected that plan of salvation. And we ask the Lord that during this Lenten season, almost at the end, that we only show the fruits of conversion. It's a certain life of this discipleship, always eager to do God's will in our lives and in our society. Amen. Amen. Amen.